Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are continuing our journey through the Light Campaign V2 in Automation, the car company to cool game. And we are in 1973. We have three cars in production and three cars in engineering. And um, we are looking to expand our lineup with some kind of utility or more focused on utility vehicle. I don't think it is time for off-road quite yet because uh, we want to wait for the Gasmian market to open in order to really get into this category. But if we take a look at sales, we are covering the middle, the very middle. And that is the case for both Arcana and Fruinia. I uh, certainly have a lot of um, bonus from producing so cheaply in the various re in uh, Ahana and then shipping it over. Although one thing I just noticed, which I probably should note down, is that the um, extra cost from shipping should also scale over the years. So currently it is just a flat 500 bucks for a car shipping over and a hundred dollars for an engine shipping over. And uh, that is very high in the starting phase of the game, while it is reasonably cheap in the later phase of the game, where overall the economies are stronger. So maybe it should be scaled. Anyway, so let's take a look at what we are up to. Uh, we have the VA-71 coming to the markets really early. Uh, in 74 that is yes that is just a year and or almost two years down the line so at least we need to get there and make sure that our stock is building up a little bit in the meantime and I think we can easily make sure that that is the case by just uh, amping up the production slightly now that should do so a little bit of a buffer there for um, the production of this one kicking in and then we have the dash the dash is still doing really well we have stock uh, lots of stock a little bit too much stock but eh, who really cares the pico yeah we already adjusted the standard to produce more i think let's uh, bump this up even higher and that should do and now for the rest of it well we just have to wait so let's uh, speed up until the next year all right uh, lost a little bit more of prestige I gained a sliver of reputation and again had pretty big profits half a billion and the stocks aren't looking too bad but we do need more of the base version of the VA66 and I'm not quite satisfied with the stock of the wagon so what I'm going to do is just amp up production overall and then turn down the production of the premium a little bit while we go to two which is efficient and nice and then we amp up the base and the wagon just like this and then leave the premium just there that should be good so we are building up a little bit of stock until this one gets replaced and then we can sell into the market while the other one comes onto it uh, soon it should be uh, starting to get cancelled here uh, but we are building up enough stock here now it's cancelled Oh wow, we are selling out super quick and you can see that in the Pico as well. Wow, the premium is sold out there too. What the hell? That's pretty massive. Um, maybe we should revise this one up. Is this already pretty high? Could run it at 2.5. Maybe the economy is just turning up once again. <coughs> Let's take a look here. Oh, no, it isn't. That is a big recession. Still ongoing. Still ongoing. But it should bottom very soon and then rise up, which is good for... Let's take a look at the commercial category because they are usually telling when it's peaking. Um, market. <coughs> oh, yeah, there you can see it. There you can see it. It's already rising. Oh, that's a good thing. And... 
It's rising reasonably quickly in Ahana too. Faster than in Ferenia, that is. So that does bode well for what is to come here. This is still messy, but uh, stagnating and now it will go up. This one's kind of a stagflation. <laughs> no, that's the wrong term to use. Uh, stagnation for, for the whole market for such a long time. Let's also take a look at what our uh, R&D does. We are almost there for the bottom end. Uh, so not much more to go. And we are almost there for the fuel system too. Hmm, very good. For the next cars, we certainly will have both of these tech pools available. But now let's see how the cars go into production. There we go, so production is on. And let's see how things are going. All right, not not convincing. <clears throat> Let me just sell this one for scrap so that we get rid of uh, the whole entry of it. And now let's take a closer look at what is going on here. So the Pico is selling really well. Uh, we don't have that massive amount of stock anymore. But the VA is having a little bit of troubles in this market. We're selling massive amounts, but I mean, making 20k cars a month, that is difficult to sell off. Especially the base version is completely overmade. Um, I mean, we're a quarter, yeah, that's a quarter basically. I can subtract here and just pull out a little bit of the base version. All right, that should be better. Let's see if that works. Uh, one month to go. Ah, oh, it's a year end report too. Okay, another half a billion in profits. I like to see this. Reputation took a nosedive with this one. Wow, that's pretty bad. Ah, uh, was this because the um, we couldn't sell the very reliable stuff into the market? Oh, it may be because of the alloy engines. Although that one, this one wasn't designed with an alloy engine, was it? It's much more even now, though. And we do have a little bit of stock build-up. So it's all looking good so far. And the uh, dash is... Oh, wait a second. Uh, we're almost there, so let's just continue on here. 6.1. Yep, we're already here. So lower this. And now we are waiting for the bottom end. There we go. All right, bottom end is now at five. That is working out perfectly, I think. Uh, gives us a bit more uh, wiggle room for getting higher um, reliability and stuff. And also it is 1975, obviously. And let's check out the economy. Oh, upturn. When I was taking a look at the market development with these turning up, that's the best indicator you have for how the economy will turn. And while well, this all looks red, it's uh, actually pretty good. Uh, how much money do we spend? Basically 21 million a month. And currently we are... Whoa, the dash! Whoa, the dash is really fucked right now. What's going on here? Maybe we should just stop production entirely, but now I'm making a few more base models. Maybe i just drag it up a little bit. And yes, yes, because 49 months worth of stock. Better stop producing it entirely right now. Okay, let's just produce a few more of the base models and then let it go. Uh, like this. 19 months. <laughs> oh, crazy, crazy. Maybe you need to uh, lower the pricing a little and just sell them off. Probably just cancel the production now. We have so many cars lying around. The dash is coming into play very soon too. Oh yeah, definitely stop this. Stop this crap. Uh, I should, yes, I wanted to cancel it. And I need to lower the price of the premium just so that it sells a little better. Oh, this is still bugged. I'm not showing the cars anymore, but I think you can still change the price. Let's see if that helped. What to do now? Well, we do have 19, 
75. I just wanted to make sure that... Ooh. We do have the Porsche body now. Uh, the not Porsche body, sorry. And we do have this one too, which is really good. Effective area 0.56. And this one has effective area... Ooh, this is even better. All right, that's, that's really good. But just for, for those of you who don't quite know, this um, not Honda, uh, Honda X, uh, what is it, CRX um, body is very aerodynamic. It can be used for kind of sporty cars, light sports cars and stuff very well because um, it gets to good top speeds as well. Don't forget though, if you're getting to good top speeds, that automatically requires better brakes. But what worries me here is that we still don't... Oh no, we have this one. So we could build a utility vehicle. It's not perfect, but it would be something we could sell into the markets. It's certainly a truck-like thing. And um, yeah, and why not? So this is year 1975. So if we wait another year, or uh, wait until the 1st of 1976, so that all our tech pool has plopped over, um, yeah, that, that needs to be the case. And then we can start selling that one. Okay, uh, not much taxes this year. And too many expenses. And uh, the Dash 72 is almost ready to go into production. While we still have a good 30 months of, uh, of cars sitting around for, for the Dash 66. And I think before it's too late, I just lower the price even more. We do need more cars of the Pico base version it seems. The other ones are doing really well, uh, but no, they are not doing well in sales. That could also be due to the market being very low. What is the economy doing? Is it crashing again? That would be terrible. Going down from here. Oh, look at this dead cat bounce. I think that's the correct term for it after such now uh, maybe not after such a long recession but it really is a dead cat bounce we're still in the downward trend it didn't crush the uh, moving averages and sh shit and it's just continuing to move down well the Gasmian one looks a bit up and up so I'm not sure this one is all too terrible it might be um, at least flattening out here so let's get rid of model one designed uh, last year and now we just design something for a market that appreciates all the um, all the good utility. Uh, let's make it a transporter, a heavy utility vehicle to uh, conquer new markets. Ah, isn't this pretty? Uh, maybe we need more cargo space there. Just make it bigger. Because we need the prestige, right? No, not really. Uh, actually, it makes more sense to have it in a small version. You know, is that uh, we don't really need the cargo, uh, the, the engine bay size. That doesn't really help with the engine bay either. Um, but we don't want to have too much overhang because we are selling to a market which cares about off-road. And overhang is a big factor in off-road. While the cargo volume here um, is a huge factor for... Oh, we could make two versions, like a tiny one for the Freenians. And then a massive one, uh, unfortunately we can't make it all that massive, um, for the Ahanas. And let's make the base version the big one first. Here we go with a ladder frame, a steel ladder, ladder frame even. And now we want to have the main weight of the car, um, or the main drive of the car below the cargo hold. So that's why you go front longitudinal, well, double wishbone, yes, that's that's fair, fair enough. And then a solid axle leaf, steel panels, of course, don't need anything fancy. Like, make it full fiberglass, yeah! It's the GT! Uh, what, what is going on there? Ah, oh, it's just a reflection, some lamp or something? Anyway, it's the uh, GT um, super van, super transporter. Has the aggressive grill of the 2000s. And it was teleported over here uh, through time, and uh, our engineers really love this one. Ah, question here 4x4? 
or rear wheel drive. Maybe going with 4x4 gives us more access to the heavy delivery category. And I think that might be helpful. It isn't that expensive to, to get that. But now for the engine, maybe a large inline four? That would be super unsmooth though. Um, cast, yes, certainly cast. What about a three liter inline four? Oh, the shakes, the shakes, almost like Wellington right now, um, or the last few days, or Kaikura for that matter. Um, let's see, what do we want here? So overhead cam, we go with our standard build here, free valve, we don't need fancy alloy. This is supposed to be real cheap. Just to get more reliability, I think it makes sense to invest into better internals here. Uh, because the engineering time for this engine will be very low anyway, then I don't care about um, minimizing it, because we are we are spending more time on engineering the car anyway, and we do have the money. I mean, four billion. It's it's looking pretty good, but a four billion will will evaporate once we buy the new large factories. Okay, octane uh, or compression. And octane. I don't know. Maybe we go with something lowish, 26, and don't quite need all the quality in top end. Turbocharger. We could make a turbocharged supercar uh, out of this thing. Very good. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Now that is nothing for us right now because this is stupid. To build it currently, I think, because we don't have enough quality here, and this would make it super expensive. But what about single point fuel injection? Because that gives us a little bit of familiarity for the multi point as well. So that that might be a good idea. We are still ahead of time on this one, but we do have the tech pool to make this system entirely reliable. Uh, if I go to plus six, how much does it cost? 354. Turning it down a bit doesn't help all too much. So, yeah, let's go with plus six here. And, no, not a performance index. And we want to lean it out. And maybe 60 here and rev it to 5,000. It's a large engine. It's a really large engine. Probably around 180 horsepower, maybe? Double reverse flow, let's see how it goes. Oh, this is very knocky. Knock knock, who's there? It's Ron! Um, okay, 90.8. How high can we rip this thing without it exploding? Ouch! Look at this drop! Like, fuck you! No, okay, we can only go here. 61, 63, 4,900. Uh, investing this little bit of extra quality here doesn't doesn't hurt either. And I don't quite know. We do need to have a smaller exhaust to bump the low end here. Uh, oh yeah, too much power. That is better. I'm not sure if I want to go the extra step. I, I don't think that. No. 127 horsepower for such a massive vehicle is a bit on the low end already. Um, it won't be won't be a problem, but it is on the on the border of being too low. Hey, let's see what we need. Uh, manual, just for the extra fuel economy. Don't quite need that much drivability for this one. And it's supposed to be cheap. Well, we might want to look into the automatic just to make it, uh, to get up the familiarity for it for our other cars. Maybe four gear is enough. And something like this might do. A little bit of quality in here. Um, hard long life road tires, sure. And oh, we can put in the 
manual locker for this one. Or else that gives us a little bit more of off roady uh, stat, as you can see here, while otherwise it's completely the same thing as the open differential. Ah, nice, yeah, this, this one certainly works as a kind of off-road workhorse. Uh, 90 profile tires, sounds about right. 175's pretty massive, but okay. And put them out a bit. Was this too much? No. Okay, excellent. Now for the brakes, uh, vented. Vented discs, do we need that? Yeah, kind of do. Like single piston vented discs are very new on the market, but for vehicles like this, who need to go downhill, uphill, uh, then downhill again and more downhill, uh, they get lots of brake fade and brake fade for those vehicles is actually really important. That's why brake fade factors into the utility rating of a car a, a pretty high percentage. So I, I am looking at vented discs here just to get a uh, better performance overall. And vented discs here too, but much smaller overall, maybe 250s. And then no under tray. We don't really want to. Do we want that? Nah, nah. I'm I'm not sure. We can try it out. Let's go with it for now because we have been focusing a little bit on on the off road side of things here. Three times the required cooling is enough. Two seats and basic basics power steering and let's go with uh, what do we want to go with probably standard because they don't really care and no 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 nah, nah, we don't need quality in there and but this one deserves a bit of quality in this one too just a bit more comfort with the standard springs we have such a high familiarity rating that doesn't matter same goes for the gas mono it doesn't add much cost just a few bucks so we go with this and it improves the car quite a bit uh, what do we have utility is very high off-road is very high as well yeah that's a pretty good vehicle heavy utility that's what we aimed at perfect it's even quite affordable so now I just want to um, get this one down to 1.0 and there we go 1.0 and we have 50 drivability excellent the uh, roll angle is all good too don't want to make it too stiff uh, let's see if a bit of extra yeah damper stiffness helps a lot no nope, that was too much okay yep that's all good let's go with this uh, the brakes wow okay brakes um problem problem brakes See if we go with 85. Yeah, that's about right. And we go with 40 here. That's also about right. And we have better stats, and people love us for it. Now I just need to make sure that the markets do enjoy this car. Uh, that is prior to engineering and production. That it should be good. And the most important part about this is that we are not cannibalizing significantly any of the other categories we are in. Uh, this is entirely a new market segment for us and it's a large one. Now, uh, do we actually want to produce more than one model of this? That is a question. Hmm. Maybe the light delivery would like us better with some other design. Uh, the Freenians don't want any off-road anyway. So what we could do is make this the heavy utility and then we clone it and make the delivery out of it where we just get rid of all the heavy uh, equipment for off-roading and let's see that would be here we go to open and let's choose the correct categories first come on markets and we go to light delivery and we go to delivery because Froenia definitely wants the light delivery and we 
have this one now cloned, so I can go back here and change its size. Can we make this even smaller? No, we can't. Okay, and now let's see if this actually works. Oh, okay, no, it's not optimized anymore. Uh, Off-road is still fine, utility is still fine. And what do the markets say? It's more focused on light delivery, but I think it actually took a hit from it. And let's see how poorly optimized it is. Uh, pretty poorly optimized. We do need more grip in the front. So let's add a little bit there and take away here. Oh, that was too much. Okay, well, that, that's good enough. And let's see again the markets. Is this for Forenia? Yeah, it is. It is for the Forenia market. Maybe they... Let's just expand on the rear once again and see what they do. So 90.5 is what they... how they like it right now. And here we can morph, for instance. Um, so let's extend it. This is as high as it goes. And now let's check. So 90.5 it was. And now it is... 92.9! Yeah, okay, so it is better. They, they do like it better. Uh, when it's slightly larger holds more cargo okay we can accept that and put this one back to how it was there we go um, doing well 91.3 is this better in a sporty setup no okay <laughs> good I was I was uh, thinking that I was tripping balls here that is nope not the case very good and uh, now we have a good utility vehicle. We can still get rid of some trash here. For example, the under tray makes it better, indeed. Uh, then we can... Can we make it... Ah, they don't like this. Why don't you like it? Uh, do these guys like... Yes? Yeah, they do. Ah... It's difficult to choose. Engineering time doesn't become that much longer. Reliability doesn't hurt either. Mm. Yeah, I think we go with this one. And for the brakes, nothing has changed. Good, good, good. Ah, these might be a little too close to each other, actually. It's not quite worth... Not quite worth the effort of building another one for this. Yeah, they are very similar. 96. Let's take a look at the heavy utility and see its spectrum here. There is a slight difference here, though. Hmm. The other one is more of a pure utility vehicle. So maybe we make it the difference larger by just going in here and choosing different tires. If we chose chunky off-road, that will make it a lot different and focus more on the off-road categories and then the um, delivery version can focus more on the actual delivery segments. Wow, this one doesn't want to budge. Uh, what do we do here? Just increase this. Yeah, move it down and decrease this further. Further? Further? The Führer? The Führer says we has to decrease things further. Um, okay, 1.0, 50.5, looking good. So far so good. Uh, now let's take a look at the markets once again. This is really good in off-road. Yeah, even though they hate off-road. Let's see, in off-road it's doing well, no one can afford it, but in off-road premium, they still like it. Maybe we should make a version of this with a, a little P in the title. Uh, just for the Aran market. But then again, that market is so tiny. How many are in that market? It can't be many. And overall, the lineup gets too complicated then again. Now, uh, I, I want to keep it simple for this one. So what are our stats now? What is the off-road? 60.9. That is massive. And uh, do we want to have even more? No, we can't have more. See, the difference is... Wow. Okay, that certainly helps the off-road. And for this we can even have more cooling. Uh, did this help anything? No, it 
kind of basically only hurt. But for... Oh, yes. Okay. The heavy utility certainly needs more gears, though. And... What the hell? That's... That's, like, faster than... <laughs> it's faster than my city cars. Uh... And maybe a bit wheel spinny. Now, if I up this, can I get to something more reasonable? Even more wheel spin. 35? It's just getting worse. What is... What the hell is going on? Well, that's the um, kind of wheel spin we have to live with, it seems. And if I go this way, it certainly gets worse. Okay, so this is our... That's a real sprinting van. If we have this at... Like here, we have a 0 to 100 time of... 10.4 seconds! 10.4 seconds for a massive van in 1976. The engine is pretty good, I would say. And I don't think we have any kind of uh, performance issue here. Nope, zero. <laughs> zero. Also, a really high sportiness value for such a vehicle of 2.7. Wow, you feel the sports as soon as you sit into it. Ah, oh, another thing here. Although, I do need ABS for this, really. Uh, would be to uh, over overperform the brakes because you have loads and shit. So maybe that helps. So let's take a look at this rating. If we amp it up to 100 and like 55. Nah, nah, they didn't quite like that. Okay, taking another look at the delivery version of this vehicle. How are we scoring right now? Still heavy utility. Still heavy utility. Even though we have the hard long life tires on there and the brakes are more moderate, we don't have the off road skid tray. So, how do they like automatics? 105. Oh, they like the, uh, the manuals a lot better um, because of the fuel economy. Okay, after a bit of naming, uh, that should do. And let's see if we are all done here. Ready to go into engineering? Yes, we are. 2.3 years, that's basically nothing. 2.1 years, uh, that's plenty of time to make things reliable, which this car definitely wants to be. Uh, maybe three years as baseline? Yeah, 80, 80 reliability with this one. That is insane. 62 here isn't bad either. And there we go. 69 now. That will be a massively reliable vehicle. And the um, emphasis probably lies on massive because it is massive. So mm, we do need a new factory. Yes, that is correct. We want to build this shit in Ahana. And let's see. Ooh, <laughs> I think I know what we're doing, guys. I think I know, because we have lots of cash and the best part, drum roll, the economy is bad, which means we can buy plots for cheaps. So yes, all the plots buying here. Let's buy a huge plot here and a huge plot for you, sir. Here we go. Yes, now we have a Massive factory for our. Oh, we have to call it something too. Uh, for our plant. This is the. Of course, this is the Svakla factory. Isn't isn't that true? And no, it is not a. Come on, see. Um, it is not a small factory, but it is a huge factory. It only costs us 1.5 billion 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 dollars to build. And this might be a bit large. Uh, we don't... <laughs> no, no, this is too much. This is too much because we we don't even have the market awareness right now. So that would be complete overkill. We could produce like three months, maybe six months, and then cancel the production and have enough cars sitting there for, for three years. So, no, we go with the large one. We started out easy. We go with a high degree of automation though, and a reasonable degree of tooling quality. Oh, this is so expensive. 
This is so expensive. No, he don't don't care about tooling quality. And maybe you want to, after all, go with a. Uh, let's see. That is uh, 540 per day, basically. That is 800. What? Uh, no, we want to go with this. 800. Yep, perfect. That is much more balanced. And how much does an engine cost? Nothing? It's basically free. Look at that. 142 bucks. And that doesn't change much here. It changes the pricing of the factory massively, so... Let me do it like this. 55 automation level. Certainly enough. And now for the production. Uh, no idea. Let's just leave it there. Uh, match the car, yep. And... Woohoo! Now that does look nice. This is for the delivery, and let's see the heavy delivery. Oh, one, yes, much more off-road. Look at that, 152 in off-road. Uh, yes, let's mark it up a little bit. Just like 20%, 25. Ah, uh, 25, it's a little high. 21, yeah, that, that's good. Uh, delivery gets marked up by... 20 something 25 maybe yeah yeah uh, it's all looking brilliant uh, so 20% profit margin on both of these and no one likes the heavy utility this time around we can actually kind of rely on these figures because we are not cannibalizing in these markets at all right now so these figures are accurate um, we do overproduce but we have no market awareness. So I want to overproduce pretty massively at the start and then like just push in, push, push, push. It's all good. And it costs us a measly 1.1 billion, 2.1 billion. And uh, it takes 57 months until it pays off. Not too bad. And I think this is a great thing to sign off on. So let's go. Ooh, the Taurus. The Taurus, the VA Taurus 76 is in design. And I think with this, we conclude today's episode. Hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.